Early Development Era, 1910 to 1940. The journey began on November 14, 1910, when civilian pilot Eugene Ely accomplished the extraordinary feat of launching a Curtis biplane from a wooden platform constructed on the USS Birmingham. This groundbreaking achievement was quickly followed by another milestone on January 18, 1911, when Ely completed the first arrested landing on the USS Pennsylvania, utilizing a primitive arresting gear system made of ropes and sandbags. These initial experiments, while rudimentary, demonstrated the potential for ship-based aircraft operations. The true birth of American carrier aviation materialized in 1922 with the conversion of the Collier USS Jupiter into the USS Langley CV-1, the nation's first dedicated aircraft carrier. At 542 feet in length, Langley served as an experimental platform featuring innovative elements such as a flush wooden deck, retractable masts, and a collapsible stack. Despite numerous operational challenges, including the notorious instrument face phenomenon and high accident rate, Langley proved invaluable in developing fundamental carrier operations. The introduction of the Lexington-class carriers in 1927 marked a quantum leap in capabilities. Under the Washington Naval Treaty, USS Lexington CV-2 and USS Saratoga CV-3 were converted from battle cruisers to aircraft carriers, bringing unprecedented scale and sophistication to carrier operations. At 888 feet in length and displacing approximately 36,000 tons, these vessels could carry over 90 aircraft and introduced crucial innovations such as the island superstructure and advanced aircraft handling systems. By the late 1930s, the U.S. Navy had gained substantial experience through extensive fleet exercises, leading to significant operational discoveries and doctrinal developments. The launch of USS Ranger CV-4, the first purpose-built American carrier with a displacement of 14,500 tons, demonstrated the Navy's growing expertise. This was followed by the Yorktown-class vessels with a displacement of 20,000 tons, representing a more mature design philosophy. Though constrained by the Washington Naval Treaty, these pre-war developments established critical design principles and operational procedures that would prove decisive in the coming global conflict. The World War II era 1941-1945 The World War II era marked a pivotal transformation in aircraft carrier warfare, dramatically demonstrating both the devastating potential and the vulnerabilities of naval aviation. The Japanese attack on Pearl Harbor in December 1941 served as a stark illustration of carrier power, while simultaneously catalyzing the most significant expansion of carrier forces in naval history. Early war experiences, particularly in the Pacific theater, rapidly shaped carrier development through hard-learned lessons. The Battle of Coral Sea, fought from May 4th to May 8th, 1942, marked a historic milestone as the first carrier versus carrier battle in naval history. This engagement demonstrated the critical importance of improved fighter direction and air reconnaissance while also highlighting carrier's vulnerability to dive bombing attacks. Just one month later, the decisive Battle of Midway in June 1942 42 provided additional crucial lessons, including the need for enhanced damage control following the loss of the USS Yorktown, and validated the vital role of radar operations and intelligence in carrier warfare. The Essex-class carriers emerged as the backbone of American naval power during this period. These formidable vessels, at 872 feet in length and displacing 27,100 tons, represented a quantum leap in carrier design. With a capacity for 90 to 100 aircraft and a top speed of 33 knots, they incorporated major improvements in protection systems, including a 2.5-inch armor deck and enhanced anti-aircraft defenses. The U.S. Navy's industrial might was demonstrated by the completion of 24 Essex-class carriers out of 32 ordered, with an average construction time of just 20 months and a cost of 68 to 78 million dollars per unit. Carrier air wings underwent significant evolution during the war years, transitioning to more powerful aircraft such as the F-6F Hellcat Fighter, SBD Dauntless, and SB-2C Helldiver Dive Bombers, and TBF Avenger Torpedo Bomber. Operational capabilities were revolutionized by introducing radar-guided interception, coordinated strike packages, and enhanced night operations. These advancements culminated in the massive carrier battles of 1944, including the Battle of the Philippine Sea, June 19-20, 1944, and 
the Battle of Lake Gulf, October 23 to 26, 1944, which demonstrated the maturity of U.S. naval aviation and the effectiveness of multi-carrier operations. The war years transformed aircraft carriers from experimental platforms into the centerpiece of naval warfare, establishing operational doctrines and technical standards that would influence carrier design and operations for decades to come. The post-war evolution, 1946 to 1960, the introduction of jet aircraft in the late 1940s, including the FH-1 Phantom and F-2H Banshee, brought immediate and significant operational challenges. Higher landing speeds necessitated substantial modifications to existing carrier designs. Aircraft that once landed at relatively modest speeds now required stronger arresting gear systems, longer landing areas, and significantly improved visual landing aids. Similarly, the launch requirements for these heavier jet aircraft demanded greater catapult power and increased fuel capacity, while their operations consumed substantially more fuel than their propeller-driven predecessors. Three revolutionary developments during this period significantly transformed carrier operations. In 1952, the angled deck, a British innovation, was first tested on the USS Antietam. This modification, featuring a 10.5-degree offset from the centerline, enabled simultaneous launch and recovery operations while significantly improving safety during missed approaches. The Fresnel Lens Optical Landing System, FLS, introduced in 1955, dramatically reduced accident rates from 35 to 7 per 10,000 landings through its innovative mirror-based system that provided pilots with precise glide slope information using a stabilized light source visible up to a mile from the carrier in daylight. The adoption of steam catapults between 1954 and 1957. Another British development provided launching power of up to 70,000 pounds of thrust, essential for launching the new generation of jet aircraft while improving reliability and control. The Midway class carriers exemplified this evolution through extensive modifications. Originally configured with a displacement of 45,000 tons and a theoretical capacity of 137 aircraft, these carriers underwent significant modernization as part of the SCB-110 program. Improvements included the addition of an angled deck, new elevators, enhanced electronics, and C-11 steam catapults, transforming them into modern platforms capable of operating advanced jet aircraft, such as the F-4 Phantom II, effectively. The Cold War period 1961-1991 the Cold War era marked a revolutionary phase in aircraft carrier development, highlighted by the integration of nuclear power and the standardization of supercarrier design. The launch of the USS Enterprise, CVN-65, in 1961 heralded the dawn of nuclear-powered carriers. As the world's first nuclear-powered carrier, Enterprise represented an unprecedented leap in naval technology. With its eight A2W nuclear reactors generating 280,000 shaft horsepower, a displacement of 93,000 tons, and a length of 1,123 feet, it was the largest and most sophisticated warship ever built at a cost of $4.16 billion. The Enterprise introduced revolutionary features, including the advanced Scanfar radar system and significantly enhanced electrical capacity, setting new standards for carrier capabilities. However, the 1960s also brought sobering lessons through two major accidents. The USS Forrestal fire in 1967 resulted in 134 deaths and 161 injuries when a Zuni rocket accidentally misfired. Just two years later, a fire aboard the USS Enterprise in 1969 claimed 28 lives and injured over 300 crew members. These tragedies led to comprehensive reforms in safety protocols, including improved weapon handling procedures, enhanced firefighting capabilities, and better damage control training. The lessons learned from both innovation and tragedy culminated in the development of the Nimitz-class carriers, beginning with the first ship commissioned in 1975. These vessels represented the first standardized supercarrier design, featuring two A-4W nuclear reactors with a displacement of approximately 100,000 tons and the ability to carry over 90 aircraft. The Nimitz-class incorporated major operational improvements, including enhanced power generation, four aircraft elevators, four steam catapults, and advanced radar systems, establishing a new benchmark for carrier design that would dominate naval aviation through the end of the Cold War and beyond. The Modern Era, 1992-2024 
The modern era of American aircraft carriers, spanning from 1992 to 2024, represents a period of significant technological advancement and operational adaptation in response to evolving global challenges. The early post-Cold War period, 1992 to 2005, saw substantial changes in carrier air wing composition. Notable modifications included the integration of the advanced FA-18 Super Hornet, typically 44 aircraft per air wing, enhanced electronic warfare capabilities with the EA-18G Growler, and the introduction of sophisticated helicopter operations with the MH-60RS. Simultaneously, carriers underwent extensive technology integration, incorporating advanced combat systems and digital control networks that revolutionized their operational capabilities. The Nimitz-class modernization program, 1995 to 2015, brought these vessels into the 21st century through comprehensive upgrades. Major improvements included advanced radar and installations, notably the ANSPY-1 radar system, enhanced electronic warfare systems, and modernized launch recovery systems. These upgrades, combined with improved efficiency measures and enhanced safety systems, significantly reduced crew requirements while improving quality of life aboard these massive vessels. The development of the Gerald R. Ford class, beginning in 2005, marked the most revolutionary advancement in carrier design since nuclear propulsion. With a displacement of approximately 100,000 tons and a crew of 2,600 reduced from 3,200 on Nimitz class, these carriers introduced groundbreaking innovations. The Electromagnetic Aircraft Launch System EMALS, replaced traditional steam catapults offering smoother acceleration and greater operational flexibility. The Advanced Arresting Gear AAG system and redesigned island structure relocated 140 feet aft and 20% smaller dramatically improved flight deck operations. Perhaps most significantly, the new A1 1B nuclear reactors, generating over 300 megawatts of power, provide 250% more electrical capacity than their predecessors, future-proofing these vessels for upcoming technological advancements. This modern era has established new standards for carrier operations, combining increased automation, enhanced safety features, and improved maintenance systems while reducing crew requirements and operating costs. Future Developments 2025 and Beyond in the near term, 2025 to 2035, carriers will undergo significant transformations in their air operations. The most substantial development will be the CVN-78 Class Flight 2 program, scheduled to begin construction with CVN-82 in 2028. The complete integration of 75 F-35C Lightning II fighters by 2027, alongside a fleet of 20 MQ-25 Stingray unmanned tankers, will establish the first fully operational manned unmanned team capability. The implementation of 100 kilowatt laser weapons and the Surface Electronic Warfare Improvement Program, SEWIP Block 3 by 2030, will dramatically enhance defensive capabilities. The next generation jammer and upgraded ANSLQ-32 V7 electronic warfare system will provide advanced protection against emerging threats. Looking toward midterm developments, 2035-2050, carriers will embrace more autonomous operations. The Naval Aviation Vision 2040 program outlines the integration of autonomous combat drones, XQ-58A Valkyrie derivatives, and AI-assisted flight operations using the Magic Carpet Landing System 3.0. Quantum radar systems, developed under the Office of Naval Research ONR, Future Naval Capabilities Program, will enhance detection capabilities while maintaining stealth features through radar-absorbing metamaterials. The long-term vision, 2050 and beyond, detailed in the Navy's Strategic Maritime Framework, envisions revolutionary changes in carrier design. Future carriers may incorporate fusion power plants currently under development through the Naval Nuclear Propulsion Program and modular mission bays allowing rapid reconfiguration for different mission types. Artificial Intelligence Command Systems, developed from the current Aegis Combat System, will manage most operations, while 1 megawatt free electron lasers will provide primary defense. This vision of future carrier development, supported by an estimated investment of $40 billion in research and development through 2060, represents the Navy's commitment to maintaining superior maritime power projection capabilities well into the future.